Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at images of a middle-aged female patient who presented to the emergency department with severe headache. Patient is known hypertensive, however, she had not taken her antihypertensive medications for three days. In the emergency department, patient's blood pressure was very high. She underwent CT head examination. On the CT head examination, as I scroll through, we can see subtle increased density in the left frontal sulcus. There was no other acute finding seen on the CT examination. So this finding was concerning for acute subarachnoid hemorrhage. Patient underwent CT head angiogram, which was negative for any obvious aneurysm or vascular malformation. As part of workup, she also underwent MRI brain examination. On the axial flare MRI images, we can see cortical and subcortical hyperintensities in bilateral parietal, occipital and frontal regions. This finding is concerning for posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome given patient high blood pressure and known history of hypertension. On the axial SWI images we can see subtle susceptibility in the left frontal region which corresponds to the hyperdensity we saw on the CT head examination consistent with sulcal subarachnoid hemorrhage. As I scroll through the SWI images there is no other focus of acute hemorrhage seen in the brain. Patient was discharged from emergency department after appropriate management. However, she represented few days later with severe headache. She underwent repeat CT head examination. On the follow-up CT, we can see new focus of hemorrhage in the left occipital lobe with mild surrounding edema. Patient also underwent a repeat CT angiogram examination. On the repeat CT angiogram, we can clearly see regions of vasospasm in the anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral arteries which was not seen on initial CT angiogram. These findings are concerning for reversible cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome in the setting of hypertension. So we are dealing with a patient who initially presented with headache after skipping her antihypertensive medications with imaging findings of classic posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome who on the follow-up had acute hemorrhage in the right occipital lobe and also on the follow-up CT angiogram had findings of multifocal stenosis presumably represents vasospasm likely represented reverse cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome so our patient has likely overlap of press with RCVS and hemorrhage indeed this has been well documented in the literature where the question is whether it is press or RCVS or some kind of overlap syndrome as well described in this article. This is likely because there is shared clinical and radiological features in both press and RCVS. This is not surprising considering the pathophysiology of both press and RCVS is suspected to be related to endothelial dysfunction, breakdown of blood brain barrier and impaired cerebral autoregulation in the setting of hypertension. So we have to assume that press and RCVS fall under the same spectrum related to cerebral autoregulatory dysfunction. In terms of hemorrhage in the setting of press, this article analyzed the incidence and etiology and they found that hemorrhage can be seen in up to 15% of patients in the setting of press and they notice three types of hemorrhages. Hemorrhages could be minute or sulcal subarachnoid hemorrhage as we saw in our patient at the time of presentation or they can also have focal hematoma as we saw in our patient during the follow-up CT head examination. I hope you found this interesting case of press and RCVS overlap syndrome who also had acute hemorrhage. Thanks for your attention.